I think, first of all, corporate debt is not necessarily bad. I mean, uh, we have seen a lot, so increasing every 60% in real terms uh, since 2008. But, you know, this is a new asset class, a, a more developed asset class for investors. It's good that companies also rely less and less on traditional, you know, uh, banking. Okay, so it's not necessarily bad. There is a lot. So there is a quantity issue. Why? Obviously, low interest rates, uh, the environment, a lot of... So they, they took advantage also of, uh, I would say, having a different, uh, you know, situation for financing. This is the thing. What we have seen, obviously, is that, uh, obviously, I mean, given also what happened in the recent years, I would say the quality, so there is a quantity issue, which is, again, not necessarily bad. There is a quality issue. So the quality of this debt has been, you know, decreasing. If you see historically, structurally, these are the analysis that the OECD typically performs. The, the average rating uh, um, since uh, the period of 1990, 2007, and then 2009 up till now, we have a, basically the average is a full notch, you know, below. And uh, a lot of the corporate debt is owed actually now by corporates uh, with uh, debt to EBITDA greater than four. So really heavily indebted. Now, the issue is, uh, you mentioned, is uh, I would say the refinancing now. Actually, this was pretty well managed. Uh, mm -hmm. And parallel, in parallel, there is the public debt, uh, but then we can uh, discuss later. Now, the issue is that uh, basically, we have one, 11 trillion, 11 trillion of corporate debt wow. uh, which is going to expire by the end of 2025, okay? And of this, there is a small atomic bomb, a, a small subset, which is one trillion of non-investment grade issuers yeah. uh, that is, is going to expire. So obviously, this is basically okay. fixed rate. So and, that's, uh, uh, and it will be refinanced now with this monetary policy, Absolutely. which was okay, refinanced at much higher. Come on, uh, Karen's jumping as well, but I'll just get one more question on this front as well. I, I applaud, you say we've got a lower quality of debt now, one percentage points lower. I applaud that. And I'll tell you why I applaud that. Not because I, I'm pleased that companies have got lower quality debt. Of course I'm not. But it means it's a growing realism. Because when we had zero interest rates, or next to zero interest rates, we had no differentiation between the companies who could raise uh, because they're brilliant companies, or the companies who could raise because financing was so cheap and the competition was so... And I think the second point is the rating agencies are a lot better at monitoring things post the great financial crisis. So actually, the fact that there was greater differentiation in the ratings of companies and in terms from junk to IG, I actually applaud the fact that there's a choice for investors now. No, but I, I take this point and I agree also why, because obviously this is an average and you have a lot of new entrants in the debt arena. And so you have new companies, a startup tech, and obviously they start with a, they don't have a credit history, so they typically start, you know, with a lower grade. So it, again, is is not necessarily bad. I think is a, a new issue, you know, in the economy. Now, the thing is that, okay, we have to be, you know, careful in a sense to watch out is... The, the imperative you know, issue is to bring down inflation. I think we are, we are getting right, the monetary policy. But obviously, with this very high level of interest rates, uh, we have to keep an eye on uh, financial stability risk, uh, given this uh, global indebtedness. And uh, if you allow me, you, if you pair this with also the sovereign part, uh, which I think we shouldn't underestimate, we have uh, 23 trillion of, uh, in OECD countries of sovereign debt expiring in three years, which is 50%. In total, so we have these uh, 34 trillion. This is uh, one third of the global GDP. So it's a lot. It's a lot. So we have to keep an eye on this. Uh, it was well managed, as you were saying. Uh, I have to say all public debt managers, they, they come to the OECD. We have an interest in working. They were really able to take advantage of the situation, to refinance, to lengthen, you know, duration. But okay, I mean, we have to watch it. I want to just bring up disproportionate growth because for the last decade or so, we were talking about trickle-down economics. We had QE, very low credit costs, and it felt as though those conditions were, were lifting all boats. Now we've got wars breaking out in various different regions of the world. We've got spiraling uh, credit costs and access to financial markets is tightening for some sovereigns. Are you concerned about some countries being left behind now because they've uh, battled dual or twin uh, multiple crises and simply just don't have access to markets like they would have in the past? But we, we obviously average our averages, but then you have to see different situations, also for sovereign, but also for corporate, in, for example, in advanced market and emerging economies. Uh, we have seen already some uh, uh, readjustment or selective uh, uh, 
uh, failures or readjustment of debt for some, uh, even for some, uh, you know, countries, uh, maybe a uh, small one. We have also countries that, in terms of the emerging, are heavily indebted, indebted not necessarily with bond, but with. Uh, important countries, uh, Asian countries, which are China. So they, they're heavily, you know, uh, lending, you know, to, to some countries. So um, I think we should keep an eye on uh, uh, difficulties in access, okay, from, from the sovereign. This is what you're asking. I, I, I would say this is also a more general issue. I mean, access to markets in this, uh, you know, particular situation, also with new uh, recent, unfortunate geopolitical tension, can, can become, you know, an issue.